Well, chores are done. I got boob sweat. That's man boob sweat. Goddamn titties. It happens. I'm old. I'm allowed to have titties. But I stacked the wood. I'll give you an idea of what I'm doing. Chop some kindling. And I'm going to light the fire. Crack a beer. Read some Huckleberry Finn to you guys tonight. So I'll just take you for a quick tour to show you what I've been doing. What happened. Well, or I can just go like this. But anyways, I opened up the uh, outside window. So that I get some uh, fresh air. Because it's friggin' plus 24 Celsius today. Like, I don't know what's going on. Hot. So over here, you can see how I'm starting to stack against the wall. That's going to go all the way up the wall, all up that way. What I got over here, got my kindling all stacked up in the pail. It's not my shitter pail. It's my uh, bark pail. That's dried bark when I was stripping poles. So what I do is I throw some paper, throw that bark on top of it, throw the kindling on top of that, and then away we go. So you guys can watch me light the fire and go from there. i got to call my dog because I don't know where she's at and what she's up to besides mischief. Lenka! Oh, okay. Getting short on paper. Where's that dog? Get over here, you. Old Archie comics. Been read a hundred times. Also, some little sap on that. Sap and bark strips. Give that a light, and then we'll just uh, have some patience and let's see. You guys can see what I'm doing. It's hot. I know that. It's okay that it's smoking. This is all open up top. I got this window open. There's cracks in the walls. Don't worry about it. <clears throat> I'll be all right. Close this a bit, and maybe it'll put the heat and the smoke straight up the pipe. There we go. Let's put my thinking cap on. Mon chapeau. That's French. I think. <laughs> I think my dog's gone wandering. I gotta get her over here. Lenka! Oh, you're right beside me. Get in here and stay in here. Come here. Hey, get in here now. Stay in here. You don't need to be wandering. There ain't no male dogs out there for you to get into. There, now you're in here. Okay, she's a going.
I think that's a nice view. Hey, guys, what do you think of that? I think so. Let's try this one out for today. Okay, let's throw some more kindling on there and some dry wood. And away she goes. Crisscross. You just throw it all on, you'll just die it out, kill it. That's no good. Nobody wants that. Can't smoke. Up the chimney you go. What's back there, Lincoln? Nothing but a burnt face. Okay, get. Okay, where's Huckleberry Finn? Up here in the cupboard. That. Got my beer. It's gonna stay like that for now. Hey, Linka, everything good? Under control? Okay, good. She's hot out. Oh, she's hot out now. I don't even know if I, I want, didn't want this fire, but you guys seem to love this fire, so. Can't disappoint. Mm -hmm. What do you want? What do you want? What do you want? It's hot here. Get away. I love you too, but the licky licky. Okay, I love you too. Get this thing going here. All right, let's get into reading mode. Set me up. How much time we got? I don't know how big this chapter is going to be, but we better get into it. Okay. Yeah. I won't put my feet up so I don't block the light for you guys. All right. Get near the end. Let's not have a humongous chapter here. Don't burn the place down. We cheer up Jim. We stop talking and got to thinking. By and by, Tom says, Looky here, Huck. What fools we are to not think of it before. I bet I know where Jim is. No, where? In that hut down by the ash hopper. Why, looky here. When we was at dinner, didn't you see a person man go in there with some vittles? Yes. What did you think the vittles was for? For a dog. So would I. Well, it wasn't for a dog. Why? Because part of it was watermelon. Oh. So it was. I noticed it. Well, it was. It does beat all that. I never thought about a dog not eating watermelon. It shows how a body can see and don't see at the same time. Okay. See, you guys are thinking too much there. I might have thought something too. It was getting a little bit bad. But dogs don't eat watermelon. It's as simple as that. You're the ones with the fucked up mind. Well, the person unlocked the padlock when he went, and went, went in. And he looked at it again when he came out. He fetched Uncle a key about the time we got up from the table. Same key, I bet. Watermelon shows man. Lock shows prisoner. And it ain't likely there's two prisoners on such a little plantation. And where the people's all so kind and good, Jim's the prisoner. All right, I'm glad we found it out detective fashion. I wouldn't give shucks for any other way. 
Now you work your mind and study out a plan to steal Jim, and I will study out one, too. And we'll take the one we like the best. Lenka, sit down. You, she's trying to jump out the window. Hey, sit down. What a head for just a boy to have. If I had Tom Sawyer's head, I wouldn't trade it off to be a duke, nor made of a steamboat, nor a clown in a circus, nor nothing I can think of. I went to thinking out a plan. Lenka, get in here. But only just to be doing something. I knowed very well where the right plan was going to come from. Pretty soon, Tom says. Ready? Yes, I says. All right, bring it out. My plan is this, I says. We can have easy find out if it's Jim in there. Then get up my canoe tomorrow night and fetch my raft over from the island. Then the first dark night that comes, steal the key out of the old man's britches after he goes to bed and shove off down the river on the raft with Jim, hiding daytimes and running nights, the way me and Jim used to do before. Wouldn't that plan work? Work? Why, certainly it would work. Like rats a-fighting. But it's too blame simple. There ain't nothing to it. What's the good of a plan that ain't no more trouble than that? It's a mild as goose milk. Why, Huck, it wouldn't make no more talk than breaking into a soap factory. I never said nothing, because I weren't expecting nothing different. But I knowed mighty well that. You see that spark go shooting like a star? Don't burn this place down, Linka. Uh... Okay. I never said nothing because I weren't expecting nothing different, but I knowed mighty well that. Whenever he got his plan ready, it wouldn't have none of them objections to it, and it didn't. He told me what it was, and I see in a minute it was worth 15 of mine for style, and would make Jim just as free a man's as mine would, and maybe get us all killed besides. So I was satisfied and said we would waltz in on it. I didn't tell it was here because I knowed it wouldn't stay the way it was. I knowed he would be changing it around every which way as we went along and heaving in new bullinesses whenever he got a chance. And that is what he done. Lenka, quit it. Just go settle down, dog. My goodness. Well, one thing was dead sure, and that was that Tom Sawyer was in earnest and was actually going to help steal that person out of slavery. That was the thing that was too many for me. Here was a boy that was respectable and well brung up and had a character to lose and folks at home that had characters and he was bright and not leather headed and knowing and not ignorant and not mean but kind and yet here he was without any more pride or rightness or feeling than to stoop to this business and make himself a shame and his family a shame before everybody. I couldn't understand it no way at all. It was outrageous, and I knowed I ought to just up and tell him so. And so be his true friend, and let him quit the thing right where he was, and save himself. And I did start to tell him. But he shut me up and says, Don't you reckon I know what I'm about? Don't I generally know what I'm about? Yes. Didn't I say I was going to help steal the person? Yes. Well then, that's all he said. And that's all I said. It weren't no use to say any more, because when he said he'd do a thing, he always done it. But I couldn't make out how he was willing to go into this thing, so I just let it go and never bothered no more about it. If he was bound to have it so, I couldn't help it. When we got home, the house was all dark and still, so we went on down to the hut by the ash hopper for to examine it. We went through the yard so as to see what the hounds would do. They knowed us and didn't make no more noise than country dogs is always doing when anything comes by in the night. Quit it, Lenka. When we got to the cabin, we took a look around the front and the two sides, and on the side I weren't acquainted with, which was the north side, we found a square window hole up tolerable high with just one stout board nailed across it. I says, here's the ticket. This hole's big enough for Jim to get through if we wrench off the board. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on, hang on. Okay, now we're good. Ugh. 
Okay, Tom says, it's as simple as tit-tat-toe, three in a row, and as easy as playing hooky. I should hope we can find a way that's a little more complicated than that, Pup Finn. Well then, I says, how will, it, how will it do to saw him out, the way I'd done before I was murdered that time? That's more like it, he says. It's real mysterious and troublesome and good, he says. But I bet we can find a way that's twice as long. There ain't no hurry. Let's keep on looking around. Betwixt the hunt and the fence on the back side was a lean-to that joined the hut at the eaves and was made out of plank. It was as long as the hut but narrow, only about six foot wide. The door to it was at the south end and was padlocked. Tom, he went to the soap kettle and searched around and fetched back the iron thing they lift the lid with. So he took it and prized out one of the staples. The chain fell down and we opened the door and went in and shut it and struck a match and see the shed was only built against a cabin that had no connection with it and there weren't no floor to the shed nor nothing in it but some old rusty played out hoes and spades and picks and a crippled plow. The match went out, and so did we, and shoved in the staple again. And the door was locked as good as ever. Tom was joyful. He says, now we're all right. We'll dig him out. It'll take about a week. Then we started for the house, and I went in the back door. You only have to pull a buckskin latch string. They don't fasten the doors. But that weren't romantical enough for Tom Sawyer. No way would do him, but he must climb up the lightning rod. But after he got up half, halfway about three times and missed fire and fell every time, and the last time most busted his brains out, he thought he'd got to give it up. But after he was rested, he allowed he would give her one more turn for luck, and this time he made the trip. In the morning we was up at the break of day, and down to the person cabins to bet the dogs and make friends with the person that fed Jim, if it was Jim that was being fed. The person's was just getting through breakfast and starting for the fields, and Jim's person was piling up a tin pan with bread and meat and the things, and whilst the others was leaving, the key come from the house. This person had a good-natured, chuckle-headed face, and his wool was all tied up in little bunches with thread. That was to keep witches off. He, he said the witches was pestering him awful these nights and making him see all kinds of strange things and hear all kinds of strange words and noises. And he didn't believe he was ever witched so long before in his life. He got so worked up and got to running on so about his troubles. He forgot all about what I'd been a going to do. So Tom says, What's the vittles for? Going to feed the dogs? The person kind of smiled around gradually over his face, like when you heave a brick bat in a mud puddle, and he says, Yes, Mars, said a dog, Kura's dog, too. Does you want to go and look at him? Yes, I punched Tom and whispers, whispers. You going right here in the daybreak? That weren't the plan. No, it weren't, but it's the plan now. So drat him, we went along. But I didn't like it much. When we got in, we couldn't hardly see anything. It was so dark. But Jim was there, sure enough, and could see us. And he sings out, Why, Huck, in good land, ain't dat Mr. Tom? I didn't know nothing to do, and if I had, I couldn't have done it. Because that person busted in and says, Why, de gracious sakes, do he know you gunlet? You gunnelman? We could see pretty well now. Tom, he looked at the person, steady and kind of wondering, and says, Does who know us? Why, this year runaway person. I don't reckon he does, but what put that into your head? What put that, dar? Didn't he just this minute sing out like he knowed you? Tom says in a puzzled up kind of way, well, that's mighty curious. Who sung out? When did he sing out? What did he sing out? And turns to me perfectly calm and says, Did you hear anybody sing out? Of course, there weren't nothing to be said but the one thing. So I says, No, I ain't heard nobody say nothing. Then he turns to Jim and looks him over like he never see him before and says, Did you sing out? Nah, sir, says Jim. I ain't. Damn it. I'm on fire! 
Oh, man. <laughs> and it says, did you sing out? No, saw, says Jim. I ain't said nothing, saw. Not a word? No, saw. I ain't said a word. Did you ever see us before? No, saw. I not as I knows on. So Tom turns to the person, which was looking wild and distressed, and says, kind of severe, what do you reckon's the matter with you? Anyway, what made you think somebody sung out? Oh, it's the dad blame witches, sir. And I wished I was dead. I do. They was at it, Sab. They, they was at it, sir. And they do most kill me. They scares me so. Please to don't tell nobody about it, sir. Or more old Mar Silas, he'll scold me. Case he say he ain't no... Casey say they ain't no witches. I just wish to goodness he was here now, then. What would he say? I just bet he couldn't find no way to get around it this time. But it's all us just so people that's sought. Stay sought. They won't look into nothing and find it out for themselves. And when you find it out and tell them about it, they don't believe you. Tom give him a dime and says he wouldn't tell nobody and said we wouldn't tell nobody and told him to buy some more thread to tie up his wool with and then looks at Jim and says, I wonder if Uncle Silas is going to hang this person. If I was to catch a person that was ungrateful enough to run away, I wouldn't give him up. I'd hang him. And whilst the person stepped to the door to look at the diamond, Bite it to see if it was good. He whispers to Jim and says, Don't ever let on to know us. And if you hear any digging going on nights, it's us. We're going to set you free. Jim only had time to grab us by the hand and squeeze it. Then the person come back, and we said we'd come again sometime if the person wanted us to. And he said he would, more particular if it was dark, because the witches went for him mostly in the dark. And it was good to have folks around then. Holy man, that was a tough stumble. That was a tough stumble. Anyways, she getting good now. How many chapters? I'd say we've got maybe four or five chapters left. Your time. Oh, this is nice. Maybe I'll turn so you guys can look at the fire and look out the window for a bit. What a beautiful evening. Can't believe how hot it was today. Okay, guys, I'm going to bid you a good night, and I think the next time we'll see you, we'll be doing some more chores, just splitting wood and stacking wood. All right, next time.